Burma coup resistance notes October 23, 2022. The illegal military regime is lashing out with the few options it has left, namely aerial bombing and chemical weapons. Russian-supplied jets dropped bombs yesterday and today on Kortri, Korkarek and Lake Kor in Korthule, on Momauk in Kachin State, and on targets in Zagaring region. The junta has been shifting troops around to respond to resistance attacks in different sites, but now these attacks are coming in too many locations, too frequently, for the shrinking supply of ground troops to respond. Airstrikes with jets are extremely expensive, however, and the regime can't keep up this intensity of bombing indefinitely. Now the regime has deployed its latest advanced military hardware against civilians, Russian-made high-powered Kamuvka 29 Helix helicopters, used October 19 in Zagaing region, this aircraft has more and powerful machine guns as well as missiles. Meanwhile, not a single international ally or organization has responded to Burma's people's call for a no-fly zone to stop the bombings, which always target civilians. Ethnic regions. In Kachin state, the junta launched an attack on a Kachin army camp at Longja Mountain yesterday near Momauk, east of Barmo town. In that attack, the Kachin intercepted three columns of troops and fired on them. The number of the resulting casualties isn't known yet, but it was bad enough that the regime sent in jets to drop bombs. Today the fighting spread to Mansi, which is south of Barmo town. In Duplaya district of Korthule, Mayawadi township on Burmese maps junta troops again tried to invade Luko NY on Creek yesterday, firing 120mm mortars and then sending in troops. The Karen Cobra battalion killed four of them and repulsed the attack. No Karen soldiers were harmed there, but four were killed in the fighting at Kaur Tree. The commander-in-chief of the Kareni Army, General Bai Tu, gave a speech yesterday at the Kareni Army's training class graduation, in which he said the revolution should be brought to a conclusion as quickly as possible so that all the refugees can return home. He said the Kareni will not attend the junta's fake peace talks, and he doesn't recognize any political legitimacy of the junta, it must be completely eradicated. Junta scorched earth village terrorism campaign. Troops fired on the historic village of Hanlingfu yesterday, which is a UNESCO-listed World Heritage Site. After occupying Hanline Few, they began firing on surrounding villages, which set off a movement tens of thousands of people from 20 area communities. The troops now have mortar and sniper posts on high ground controlling the area. People's Defense Forces PDFs. Junta troops fired chemical weapons at a PDF camp in Monowa Township of Zagaring region yesterday. A gas bomb landed among five PDF soldiers, who became intoxicated and vomited, four of them escaped, but the fifth was immobilized and was captured and killed by the junta troops. In Magwe region, 90 PDF soldiers from several PDFs coordinated to fire small arms and locally made mortars at a junta Pau Saw Hati terrorist camp and an army camp yesterday. Part of the Pau Saw Hati camp was burned down in the attack, and the PDFs fired continuously at the army camp for nearly two hours. Casualties aren't known, but one PDF soldier was killed. In previously quiescent Irrawaddy region, local PDFs are increasingly asserting themselves against junta targets. Yesterday they fired grenades at the police barracks at Shui Long in Myongmya Township, causing the police and troops to flee the station. Political and Economic Burma's pro-democracy United Nations ambassador, Ukyur Motun, renewed his increasingly urgent calls for the UN, and especially the Security Council, to make quick and clear decisions to end the killing in his country, especially in light of recent atrocities such as the Litaikone school massacre and the hanging of four politicians. He said the lives of these innocent people are being treated as worthless. Following the International Financial Action Task Force's blacklisting of Burma as a money laundering country on October 21, the value of the kiat currency crashed even further than previously, reaching 6,300 kiats to the US dollar. Prior to the coup it was worth 1,300 to the US dollar, meaning that the coup has resulted in an 80% loss of the currency's value. The National Unity Government conducted another online sale of junta-owned property, this time small plots in Bahan Township of Yangon. The plots sold out in 90 minutes and brought in 8.75 million United States dollars, which will be used in the fight against the junta and to support war refugees and liberated schools.